So picture this, it's 5 p.m. on a Friday afternoon and you get a ping from your email and there's a client's email there asking you to make some changes to their website. They need them done today and then there's some back and forth between you and the client to find out exactly what they want, making sure everything is up to date. And before you know it, your Friday is ruined and potentially your entire weekend. There's got to be a better way. Well, today we're going to take a look at the platform called Atarim. This is a great platform for allowing us to have collaboration between clients on projects, keep track of everything, and well, just basically make life a lot easier for ourselves. Now today, I'm going to be looking at the free platform, which gives you an awful lot, but there is a premium or pro paid plan, which you can take a look at if you want to. Today, like I say, just the free plan. Let's hop on over. So this is the website. I would recommend checking it out, taking a look. It'll give you some more information. I'll drop a link in the description below. But go ahead, sign up for an account. It's totally free to get started. Once you've done that and you've confirmed your account, you'll kind of come into the dashboard so let's take a quick look at some of the things we can do. This is not an exhaustive tour. It's going to be a get started quick guide just to kind of get you up to speed with what you could do. Then you can take it for a test drive yourself. What we can do is we can add a site or if we're using WordPress, we can also connect this up with the WordPress plugin. But the beauty of this is you don't need to. You can simply go ahead and drop in the URL to any site at all. You don't need to be connected with it. So if you want to include Microsoft, Apple, whatever, you can connect those up. And why would that be useful? Well, just consider this. If you're working with a new client and they've got some ideas, you can ask them to submit a couple of different websites they like and don't like. You can add them to your Atarim dashboard, and then you can have a collaborative kind of conversation where they can click on things they like, make notes, leave little bits and pieces, and you can have a trackable two-way conversation between you and the client using the Atarim platform. Then obviously, when you're working on their project, you can do the same thing, but on their website. So let me just show you how easy it is to go ahead and add a website in. So even though this is the WordPress website, all I'm going to do is just simply click and drop in the URL. We'll click Add Site. That's now going to send Atrium over to the site. It's going to take a screenshot of it, takes a couple of seconds, and then we've kind of connected the two things together so we can start interacting with that design inside the Atrium platform. So there we go. We've now connected this up. Probably took around five or six seconds. Very, very quick and easy. So now we've got this way of interacting with this particular page. But let's just say it's not this page you want to interact with. It's a different page where well, you can come down to the bottom and you've got the option to switch between browsing and commenting. By default, commenting is the option that's available. As you can see, when we hover over, we can click and add comments, which we'll come back to in a moment. If we switch this over to browse, Let's just say, for example, we have a very specific page we like something on. We can simply come down, choose that page. We can interact with it by clicking. That's then going to go and open up that link. There's the page all ready for us to start interacting. Now we can switch this back over to comment and we can interact with this page and leave comments on the page itself. And we can leave comments anywhere on any page throughout the entire site. And it could be any site. Let's say I don't like this image, I want to change it for something else. You'll notice that when we hover over, we get this little bounding box around the particular item that we're going to select, and we get our mouse pointer changes to the little Atarim symbol. We can click, and that allows us to leave a note on this specific element on the page. So let's just say I want to change this particular image. We can just put a note in. We can create a task from here, but we've also got some options above. We can choose who we want to assign this to. So let's just say you were working with the premium plan and you would need the premium plan for this because the free only gives you one user. But if you're a freelancer or a solopreneur, that's going to be more than enough for you anyway. But if you've got more people, you can use this option to select who this is going to be associated with. And we can do this from the user's point of view, and we can change that in the back end at any point later on down the line. We can also go ahead and say how what status we want this in. In example, this is open, so nothing's been done with it. We can say, well, this is now in progress. So when the end user comes back and they want to check, they can see, ah, okay, this is in progress, so I know something's happening. You can see review, and finally we've got completed. So it's very easy to set exactly what's going on. Then we've also got the priority option. So there could be something on here that could be a price is incorrect or some details are wrong, where you can say this is critical and has to be done straight away. However, if it's something that's not particularly important, you can set it to low. So you can quickly and easily set up exactly how important the task is, who it's assigned to, and all those kinds of things. Then we can say create the task. So a task has now been created, and you'll see we've got some more options available to us over what we just saw. We've got the ability to take a screenshot of this. So if we click this, you can see this now takes a screenshot and adds that to this particular note. So we can see what was it like before things were done, and then we can kind of use this to track things. 
We've also got the option then for information about the browser that the end user was on when they were viewing this. So I may be using a Mac, someone else could be using a PC, and we could say, well, this isn't working properly. And then we take a look at it, and it's perfectly working fine on our side. We can check out what system they were working on. That helps us fault find where problems may have arisen. So that's pretty cool to see. You also go ahead and you can add different files to this if you want to. So you can tag this in. So if you've got something you want to add, like for example, you want to upload the image for this particular change, well, you can do that inside here as well. Now, one of the things you're going to find with the free plan is you are limited to, I believe it's one gigabyte of storage, which is still pretty generous. However, when you move up to the paid plans, that goes up based upon the plan that you choose. So obviously, if you're going to have files associated with things, we're going to upload content, this could eat into that storage very quickly. So just bear that in mind. You can see we've also got the option now to go ahead and mark this as completed. Let's click it as mark and complete. And we say we're happy that's all been done. So now everything is listed inside you, including the screenshot and everything else that goes with it. If we take a look on the right hand side, we've got this column that shows us all of the different changes or all of the different notes that have been added to this page, but also in the second column to all pages. So we can see when we're working on a specific page, everything we need to do is listed under that section. However, all page is going to show us everything throughout the site. And I'll come back to that in a moment. We'll add some more comments in other places to see how this all works. So we're going to go back to that. You can see this allows us to see exactly what's going on. We can click on it. It'll take us straight to that. So let's just say, for example, we come down and choose something else. We'll just click on there and just say change the background, for example. We'll set this to be in progress and we'll say this is going to be immediate importance. We'll create that task. And you can see now this is automatically numbered as task number two. And as we add more, they'll automatically increment. And you can see now on the right hand side, we've got two inside here. This bottom one has been marked as completed. So we've got the little check inside there. And you'll see this other one is actually still set to be set up. We click, it'll take us to the first one. We click, it'll take us to the second one. So we can very quickly and easily see exactly where these comments are. And then we can interact with them and update them as we need to. So let's quickly go back now and browse out of this. Let's go to a different page. Let's go back to our home page. And let's go ahead now, switch this back into commenting mode. And we're going to click and we'll just say we want to update this title. We'll create that task. We'll take a screenshot. And we'll close it down. So now you can see on this page, we've got one item that we need to deal with. But if you click on all pages, you can see this shows us all of the different items we have to deal with throughout the entire site design. So it's very easy. Like I say, everything you need is inside there. So now we've seen how all this works. Let's take a look at some of the options at the bottom. You can see we can go ahead and we can refresh this. So if we've made some changes or we've got someone making changes in the background, we can refresh it to make sure we're seeing the most up-to-date version of this particular page. We can switch back into our website screen, which will take us back to all the websites we have in our account. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We can go ahead and we can approve the page to say that we're happy with the changes and everything on this page is now finished, finalized, and we approve it. And then we've also got the option to switch between the various different responsive modes. So at the moment, we're looking at desktop, but we may want to check this out on tablet. And then we might want to check it out on mobile just to make sure everything is working. And again, we can go ahead and make any notes or iterations on here that we need to. So it's all very, very simple and straightforward. Let's just set this back to be desktop. Now, if you want to, you've got options over on the right hand side to invite your team members or clients to collaborate via a link or email. So we click on this, you can see we can go ahead and we can invite people in and there's a dedicated link underneath to share this if we want to. So pretty cool to see you can do that. And then we've got a general task. So let's just say, for example, what we want is to be applied to the entire site or we're not specific changes on the page itself. Well, this is where we can use the general option. If we click, you can see the same options are inside there, but this isn't associated with a specific item on the page. So we can just put in a general comment, for example. We'll go ahead and set a priority on this. We'll say this is medium and we'll just say create a task. And there we go. We've now created a task that's kind of a global task. And again, if we come and take a look on the right hand side, you can see if we go to this page, we've got two options on here. We go to all pages. You can see the general comment at the top is pinned at the top. And therefore, whichever of the pages we look at, that's going to be there because it's a general thing that we need people to take note of. So this is site wide. 
Now, if you find you get stuck on something and you want some help or support, you can see we got the little chat bubble in the bottom right hand corner. We can click and open that up. And inside there, we can start a chat or we can go ahead and we can actually search the knowledge base for the very, very well documented list of help articles and information about the whole platform and how you get started using it all. OK, so we've basically done everything we want on this page. Now let's go ahead and just click on the go to website screen. So we're going to click to go back and that will now take us back into our dashboard. And you can see there's the overview of our project or projects if we have multiple ones inside here. And if you want to, you can come over, you can see we can open the inbox, we can open the boards, we can collaborate, we can open stages, and we've got open settings. If we take a look at the settings, you can see inside here we can choose project information, we can refresh the image, and there's various different things you can do inside here. But what's more interesting is some of the other options you have. So if you take a look on the left-hand side, you can see we've got the inbox. If we open that up, that will now show us all the projects we have on the left hand side, including an overall email inbox. It'll show us all of the tasks, including their status. We can click on any of these and get information about those in the main window. And over on the right hand side, you can see you've got attributes, which includes the image, the technical information, the status and so on. So if we click and open these up, you can see this tells us all the info about the browser that the user was on when they added this note or this attribute in. So you can see all this is stored as part of every single task you apply. If you come into filters, you can see you've got a range of different filters. So you can filter things out based upon, you know, the task type, general, admin, page, graphics, and so on. So there's a great way of doing that. Again, if we come over and choose something else, and you've got filters, and you can add tasks directly inside here. You can see you've got urgency, progress, tags, everything. We can leave comments inside here. So you have one centralized location where all of these things can be handled. You can also go ahead, if you were on one of the premium plans, and actually set this to be assigned to someone else. Because, like I say, in the free plan, you've only got you as the account holder. So that's pretty cool. You can export all the options inside here as well. So it's great to see that you've got a centralized location. If we come over to the boards view, this is more of a Kanban view now where we can see pretty much the same information. And you can see down the left hand side, it now shows us the different tasks that we have. But we can see in a Kanban view exactly where they are in the process. So are they an open task? Are they pending review? Are they completed in progress? So let's just say we finished with this updating the title. We can say that's been completed, drag that straight over there, boom, job done. Want to put it back, we can drop it inside a different location. And emails are sent out when all these things are done to the end user. Anybody that's set up to be included in this will get an email to let them know the different things that have happened. So it's pretty cool to see that. So we can drop that inside there. You can see we can also go ahead and add a task in directly inside here. So we can say add another task. That opens up the options on the right hand side. And now we can choose what project this is included to, any page that we've got included in it, the status, the urgency. We can create the task. We can do all various different things inside here as well. So it's very quick and easy to do inside this particular panel. Hopping over into settings, you can see you've got a range of different settings you can configure, including color schemes and so on. And you've also got your managed users. So if you are on one of the premium plans, you have multiple users, you can manage those inside you. So basically, that is the Atarim, which is the way that I know Vito will say this. That's how this platform actually works. And if you see when you come to the dashboard, you kind of get a brief overview of all the different things you can do. But for me, if you are working in a business where you're working with clients and you want to ease the friction that you potentially have when working on projects, something like Atarim is going to be invaluable to you to speed up the process and also potentially cut down on multiple different tools you may be using to do a very similar job. But what are your thoughts on this? Have you used Atarim yourself? Is this something you would look at using now you've seen what it's all about? If you have, let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to get your feedback, including any other options that you think are worth checking out that do a very similar thing to this platform. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.